So welcome back. We are into ch chapter five of your uh, the paperback and uh, chapter five plus six in the in the ebook. Okay, so. Uh, the paperback has uh, these chapters combined basically yeah so uh, both of them are talking about basically multi degree of freedom degree of freedom system vibration okay okay so so whatever the content it, uh, here, so if you are paperback, uh, uh, if you are uh, referring to, so this will be from a single chapter, chapter number five, you are referring to the ebook, then chap it will be in the, the content will be split into two chapters, chapter five and six. So, uh, so as, uh, in the last video lecture we covered some part was from the chapter 6 as far as the ebook is concerned okay okay so anyway so in the last lecture we were studying this system so mx double dot plus kx equal to 0 okay and uh, this is m degree of freedom of freedom m is a number basically this is m is greater than one yeah so multi degree of freedom where m is a number so that wh what is the meaning of that is this is uh, m by m matrix this will be m by one this again m by m matrix and this is also m by one matrix or so vector yeah and this zero is also m by one yeah and then uh, we find out the solution will be of this type so x uh, will be equal to so the solution we assumed was x equal to x naught uh, and then sine omega t yeah and then we found that actually there are m solutions yeah we found m solutions basically in that case okay okay so M solution really means that we found M number of omega and M number of X naught. And mind it, X naught is basically, since X is M by one, X naught is also M by one vector, yeah? So here X naught is M by one vector, okay? And omega is one scalar and the solution we found out, we found out omega was omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, 2, omega m, right? And there was corresponding, so we call this one as these are eigenvalues, actually the square root of eigenvalues. So eigenvalue is lambda, lambda. So this is basically equal to root lambda one, root lambda two, root lambda three, yeah, equal to root lambda m, where lambda one to lambda m are m eigen vector, uh, eigenvalues. Yeah. So natural frequencies are basically are square root of the eigenvalues. So we got the eigenvalues. And there are eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues. So eigenvectors are x naught one, x naught two, and so on. We have x naught m, and and these are still m by one mat matrices. Yeah. So not to forget, they are m by one vector. Yeah. Okay. And then we looked at the orthogonal uh, properties of these eigenvectors with respect to mass. So what we got last time is M and choose one of them. Yeah. So let us say we are 
choo choosing the ith one. Somewhere this is ith one. Somewhere it is x not i. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if we multiply m with uh, ith eigenvalue and here the jth eigenvalue so that m is converted into a number because this will be now after transpose this will be now 1 over 1 by m matrix this is m by m matrix m already and this is you know that m by 1 matrix so it becomes 1 by 1 matrix right 1 by 1 we studied and we found out that in the last video lecture that if omega i is not equal to omega z yeah then we got this equal to 0 and hence we call it these uh, eigenvectors are orthogonal with respect to m matrix and similarly we got this result z transpose k x naught i is also equal to 0 provided omega i is not equal to omega z in derivation we saw that it was a necessary condition to actually get this uh, condition yeah so that uh, also tells you that when i equal to z right that automatically implies that omega i equal to omega z then this does not hold yeah so this is not true this and this will not be true in that case but you will get a number in that case okay so we can write it like this m x and then uh, i yet i uh, x j transpose okay x naught will equal to 0 if i not equal to z yeah and will be equal to some value let us say you call it i i if i equal to z yeah so what I mean to say is x naught i transpose m x naught i both same i here i here we are saying equal to m i i this will not be equal to zero yeah so it is something like uh, a vector cannot be perpendicular to itself right so like for example i j k you have three vectors they are like orthogonal they are also like that you know so if if uh, like i dot j for example that will give you zero yeah so that's why you call it, uh, it this is orthogonal and hence i dot i will not be equal to zero so same kind of concept here uh, it is here however there is a matrix m which is involved so hence you have to say this vector which this is a vector only this is orthogonal to another vector but not to itself yeah so that's the meaning basically so anyway so let us assume that the value of this meaning that x naught i transpose m x naught i where these are the this the x naught i is the ith uh, eigenvector yeah so this is value equal to m i i okay so in that case uh, uh, what, what happens now let, let's assume like this one let's say we say phi i phi i equal to x naught i divided by root m i i let's call this or we can also have a hat here okay like this okay just we are denoting like this one 
Yeah, so then what will you get? Same expression if you write here, transpose m x naught i will be equal to this value you know. So in these terms you get phi i root m i i equal to x naught i, right? So what we get here is basically root m i i and then phi i transpose m i will have hat here okay m then phi i hat and then root m i i again so what do you get this value Okay, just a minute here uh, okay so we x naught we are writing it uh, at root m i i so we get like this okay so so we get uh, m i i this multiplied by this times phi i hat t m phi i is equal to you know the value of this the value of this is this right so the value of this will be equal to m i i only hence uh, what you get here is phi i has transpose m phi i equal to one right so you get simple one value in this case yeah okay next we apply to this yeah, so we know that k minus lambda and then m, right? And then here you have some x naught i, yeah? This equal to 0. We know that this is the eigenvalue problem, the statement we have got in previous video lecture. So k is the... A Stephens matrix, M mass matrix, lambda is the eigenvalue, right? This is eigenvalue, and uh, this is eigenvector. Yeah. So we know this one. We are going to pre-multiply with uh, this. Yeah. X i that the ith eigenvector transposed then next step what we get we get x naught i then t k then x naught i minus lambda again lambda will be ith lambda right so since the vector is here ith vector the the problem will have the ith eigenvalue, right? So actually this is ith eigenvalue, this is ith eigenvector. So delta i, um, this is lambda i, lambda i is, is eigenvalue, that is omega i square, that really means, yeah? Okay, and then you have x naught i t m x naught i, and this value we know this value is m i i yeah so th this value is m i i so we write it here we can also write it in terms of phi right so we know already this is m i i times phi i hat transpose k then phi i right minus well, this value is here lambda i and this value we know this simply m i i and that was equal to zero equal to zero this is zero here but when you pre-multiply by this one the whole value becomes a not a constant but just a value which is equal to zero Right? So, this is a 
this is the scalar value zero yeah this is a scalar why a scalar because this is one by m this whole thing is m by m this is m by one so one by one so a scalar so this is a scalar value right okay so here equal to zero here also equal to zero what you see is a common m i i both the sides yeah and hence what do you get phi i hat t k then phi i equal to lambda i so here like this so see there are two things we got so same phi i if you pre multiply and then multiply um, if you pre multiply m times phi i then you get one but with this root k you get lambda i right okay now if i ask you what will be the value of this so i will not write i here i will write the j now j hat t k phi i equal to what you have to tell and then phi j m phi i equal to what okay okay both are same here i and i and hence you get the uh, lambda i here also i and i here this is j and this is i okay this is j okay so at here it is i again this one was nothing but you remember we call the this is nothing but x not j transpose divided by root root so right like this divided by root capital m i i times k and then you have x not i right so divided by root m i i so that means what x not j transpose k x not i divided by m i i and this we know that this is zero so zero over m i i equal to zero so basically this value will give you zero yeah similarly you can us similar analysis we can do for this also m phi i and this you will find out if this will also be zero why because i and j are this is true for i not equal to z yeah so this will be true for i not equal to z right? okay so we call this properties that that really means to to summarize simply we, we can write it as phi i hat t k phi i equal to just write like this j like this one right so j equal to zero if i not equal to z and equal to lambda i if i equal to z similarly phi z hat all these are hat here okay so <clears throat> okay so uh, phi hat transpose m phi i phi hat i is equal to zero if i not equal to z and equal to one if i equal to z so this is what we got out of 
so now let's uh, make a matrix p where we will have these things so we have phi hat i phi hat not i one two and so on phi i somewhere and then we have the last one phi m we have like this one okay so remember phi is a eigenvector which is equal to m by 1 vector right so this is also m by 1 and so on right so this is m by 1 hence p is actually m by m matrix yeah so m by m matrix okay if we have p matrix like this one we also call it hat okay so that we understand that it uh, consists of high hats and in that case if we have k first m let's do it so if we have m and then in one side we have p hat transpose and the other side we have p hat then what will be the value okay we can see just write this one this is a transpose p is like if you can like this one transpose of that so will be something like this will be phi one hat so it will not be like this one will be transpose like this one yeah so it so so if you have to write the members they will go like this one right so then it will be phi transpose two is equal to and you have phi m hat transpose you have like this then you have m and then you have this value so phi 1 hat phi 2 hat and phi m hat okay is equal to now you can see first you have you will have this this one right so you have to take this row so all of the members of phi hat t you have to multiply with m and then then you have to take all the members of phi 1 hat which will multiply first here so the value will be here it will be phi hat t 1 m phi hat 1 right then second first member second member will be phi 1 hat t m and first one from here and second one from here right so you have phi 1 from here and then th this will be phi 2 hat yeah and so on what will be the value of this phi 1 it's 1 here and 2 here since they are orthogonal it will be 0 right so this will be 0 what you will see is here diagonal all the diagonal terms will have 1 1 2 2 3 3 and so on non-diagonal terms will not have the same one yeah so for example here it is 1 and 2 here in this case 2 will come first and then 1 so all orthogonal because of that all will be zero and hence the value what you will get is you know the value of this is nothing but one so you get one zero 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 and so on then zero one zero zero and so on and so on you get and the last one it would be zero 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 
zero, zero, last one will be one like this. So what you get is identity matrix. Yeah. So so basically the value of this will be identity matrix. Okay, and which will be the I M by M. Okay. So identity matrix means diagonal diagonal terms are is one terms equal to one rest equal to zero right so this kind one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero like this and the last term this mth this mth row last row is like this yeah so this is identity matrix like right? identity matrix you may do the similar analysis with respect to k so if the same p matrix actually p matrix yeah is also called modal matrix okay so which has has all the eigen vector vectors yeah has all the eigen vectors but scaled by has all the eigen vector scaled by scaled by root m i i yeah okay so so uh, we have done that uh, already so this is a scaled one so that when we have we when we multiply we get the identity value right so if the, uh, if we use this uh, model matrix with respect to the stiffness matrix then what happens so p transpose then k then p transpose again equal to what same kind of analysis we can do here and in that case you will get here uh, you will have phi transpose 1 phi 2 transpose okay so this will be phi m transpose okay again remember this is m by m matrix this also m by m matrix this also m by m matrix yeah so here the whole thing is this one is 1 by m so 1 by m the whole thing phi 1 uh, phi hat 1 transpose is 1 by m this is also 1 by m 1 by m so total becomes m by m so the whole thing is m by m hence right okay so we have this and then we you have the k matrix which is m by m and then you have phi hat 1 phi hat 2 and so on you have phi m hat okay again individual ones is m by 1 each of them m by 1 and the whole thing is m by m okay so all the members of that will go like this yeah so like this okay so equal to if you see the details the first one will be the first value will be here phi 1 hat t k phi 1 you can actually if you don't trust you can have some values your own matrix here then transpose it you make it here you have a, some matrix here you will see the individual after the multiplic uh, multiplication the actual values will turn out to be like this one only okay so we have like this then we will have phi uh, 1 hat transpose k phi 2 
and so on. Here also we, ha we will have phi 2 hat k phi 1 hat yeah so uh, like that we will have yeah so in this here it will have phi 2 hat k phi 2 hat and so on right okay and that really means this value we have already figured out and that is lambda 1 first eigenvalue and this orthogonal 1 and 2 here so will be 0 0 and so on here it will be 0 we will have lambda 2 here 2 and 2 so lambda 2 here it will be 0 and 0 and so on and so on and the last value will be here lambda m mth one so here the 0 0 this is mth one so like this so this is how it will turn out yeah this we can say the values simply we can like write as capital lambda okay so capital lambda is equal to capital lambda which is the meaning which is like this one so that means a matrix whose diagonal values the, the uh, a matrix uh, which diagonal has the eigenvalues okay so first eigenvalue is the first diagonal entry second eigenvalue second diagonal entry and so on right so this is what that is all others are zero okay difference between this one and the identity matrix is you have 1, 1, 1 everywhere. In this case, you have lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and so on. Okay. With this, where are we heading to? Why did we do to begin with? Yeah. Okay. So, we will understand it. Actually, the idea is to use this uh, model matrix to make the, the matrices diagonal matrix. So, in order to diagonalize the system so right now they are basically dependent on each other right so if we can use these matrices to make the matrix m matrix or k matrix a diagonal matrix that way we can actually very easily make all the m equation independent of each other in other words typically k matrix are basically not diagonal matrices that means there are coupling yeah coordinate coupling yeah so by using this uh, model matrix and uh, if we multiply the, like this one, it is going to make convert K into diagonal matrix. And that really means it is going to uncouple basically, right? So all the, the equations, uh, suppose we have K matrix, now finally we have like this one, M matrix is also identity matrix. In that case, what we have? M matrix, which is a, Diagonal matrix, the K matrix, also diagonal matrix, that really means we have M uncoupled equations and hence we can individually we can solve them. We don't need to actually solve all of them together. Yeah. So we will see the application of that. Let's start with the original equations that we have been studying M X double dot plus K X equal to zero okay now we are going to choose one coordinate y such that y equal to uh, sorry uh, uh, x equal to py okay x equal to p hat y okay we also used hat so this one is modal matrix matrix 
sort of transforming basically this is original original displacement original displacement vector net vector and this this one is uh, some transformation we are applying meaning that y equal to p inverse p hat inverse x yeah so this is some transformed some transformed displacement yeah okay so basically y equal to p hat inverse x this is a transformation so this is a transformation basically right okay so we have a choice basically we are just writing x in terms of p hat multiplied by y y is also uh, y is also m by 1 matrix right like this one okay now if that is the case same equation we can write it as like this m uh, if x equal to p hat y this will also tell us that x double dot equal to p hat y double hat uh, double dot so hence we get m and then p hat and then we have y double dot plus this becomes k p hat y is equal to zero this is the original m degree of freedom systems equations so this transformed by like this one now pre multiplied by p hat transpose and then what we get is this plus p hat transpose k p hat y is equal to zero right uh, basically we can also write p hat transpose zero vector and hence this will be a zero value because this one is m by one this is one by m hence this is one by one so a scalar right now see here what do we get here this value we know that this is identity matrix so this is simply i like this right i y double dot plus this is nothing but lambda capital lambda matrix which has all the eigenvalues lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 then y is equal to 0 we have this equation now the original equation has been transformed to this equation and you know i is a diagonal matrix right and the uh, entry is one exactly one all diagonal entries are one all uh, other entries are zero lambda all diagonal uh, entries have all the eigenvalues lambda one lambda two lambda three and all other values are zero so that really means we get m uncoupled equations so gives you m uncoupled equations and you can actually solve them now individually you take one of them you can actually do it uh, solve them meaning that uh, if the uh, natural frequency you know already for that system however this will help when you have uh, for example some kind of damping also okay so we can make use of this especially when there is also a damping the system so right now it is undamped system when we have a damping then based on some constraint basically some assumption we will be able to get m uncoupled equation again and individual equation will we can uh, solve it and uh, we can that way it's uh, much easier so anyway so this is also the some interesting properties of the the model matrix model matrix has the all the eigenvectors all the scaled one as we scaled earlier 
and that if you, if you multiply, pre-multiply, and do this kind of transformation, then also you get a interesting uh, system of equation. So let's apply that model matrix to to the now the damped system. Okay. Damped vibration. Okay. So the equation we consider here is m x double dot plus then you have uh, c x dot plus k x equal to now in this case we can have zero again but this is damped vibration again this is a free vibration we are talking about but this is something like this so it's not visible well so let me uh, write it again so we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to z right so now this is a this is a damping coefficient so the this will also be uh, for example for two degree or two degree of freedom system c could be something like c11 c12 c21 c22 and so on yeah okay now solving the damped vibration even if it is a, uh, like a for free vibration this becomes difficult with uh, when you have c which is not proportional to m or k if c is proportional to k yeah and or c proportional to m yeah then it becomes uh, easy yeah so I, I will say just or basically because uh, there may be combination or a combination combination of two also possible if like this one if c is proportional to k or m then we can also make this diagonal very easily but otherwise it's a difficult so meaning that if you want to uncouple them c has to be either proportional to m or proportional to k or a combination of the two yeah, what is the meaning of that is you can write c equal to alpha m plus beta k you can write like that that really means yeah you can write like that so in that case if that is the case then it's become very easy we can make them uh, like uh, we can diagonalize c matrix otherwise it is it will be difficult to actually solve and this is also not in your syllabus okay so out of a scope but c when it is proportional to m or k this is very easy and we are going to see that yeah and this is this is uh, this simple c where it is proportional to m and or k is in your syllabus so i'm going to cover it here so m we know like this one now we, we are going to do the same trans transformation why so uh, we have um, y equal to p times x the p hat where p hat is a model matrix which has all the having a scale of eigen vectors eigen vectors so if we put that here what we get let's uh, we will have m p hat y double dot okay plus instead of c we had the alpha m plus beta k and then we have p hat y dot plus k and then you have p hat again and then y 
is equal to 0. We are going to pre-multiply with p hat transpose so that we have p hat transpose m p hat y double dot plus we have here alpha p hat transpose m p hat right plus beta p hat transpose k p hat y dot plus p hat transpose k p hat y equal to 0 or this value we know this identity matrix i y double dot plus this we know identity matrix so alpha identity matrix i plus this we know is lambda so beta big lambda matrix okay then y dot plus this we know is uh, lambda big lambda matrix lambda y equal to 0 what we see here is this is diagonal matrix 1 1 1 entry in the diagonal okay lambda is also diagonal matrix with lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 diagonal so what we see is this gives you m uncoupled or independent or independent equations right so now uh, you will get uh, equations which will be similar to that you have solved for one degree of freedom system so basically you are getting m one degree of freedom system m single degree of freedom systems and you can independently solve them and you know how to sell solve them already yeah so in chapter two for example that was free vibration for one degree of freedom system whatever you learned there same thing you can now apply here and the solution will be like this one okay of course the there you solve for x here you, you will be solving for y so what, what you will get the solution all the solution y uh, you are going to uh, get but remember y itself is a combination of all x right Com this is a combination of the actual x so 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 we are uh, actually we are solving for some other thing but uh, still these are variables to be solved. So as far as mathematics is concerned, this is the same method to solve. Okay, so uh, this kind of damping is also known as Rayleigh, Rayleigh damping. This equation, if we write, let us say, uh, this one will look like, so we are going to expand this one, okay? So we just have this only, and uh, all others, let's erase. Okay. So this one will look like something like this. So our equations, will be look like 1 0 0 let us say we are working for a, a 3 by 3 degree of freedom system okay so example example of example okay so 3 degree of freedom system okay so this will look like something like this 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 and then you have y1 double dot y2 double dot y3 double dot then you will have here which will be alpha again 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 then you have plus beta will be 1 0 0 uh, this is lambda so this is lambda 1 so this is lambda 1 but lambda 
i equal to omega i square yeah so we write here omega 1 square 0 0 0 omega 2 square 0 0 0 omega 3 square okay here we have y1 dot y2 dot y3 dot and then plus plus have omega 1 square 0 0 0 omega 1 square 0 0 0 omega sorry this is 2 omega 3 square and then you have y1 y2 y3 is equal to here it will be 0 0 0 yeah so basically you can you can write basically uh, simply like this y i ith one double dot plus alpha okay so i let us say we are taking the first uh, second one we write the second one second equation so what we write we will write y2 double dot plus alpha plus beta omega 2 square then you have whole thing y2 dot yeah okay then you have plus plus you have omega 2 square y2 is equal to 0 that's what it get okay? so this equation if you remember chapter 2 we had x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n square right so we had this equal to zero right this is the damped free vibration exactly same what you see here is exactly same yeah but not exactly same but uh, what it means to say is uh, omega 2 square here you have omega n square omega n is in that case is only one yeah so the meaning here is n for natural here 2 2 is the second natural frequency yeah so what do we get basically from this equation we can also generalize uh, like this one you have for y uh, i equal to 2 i can write y i double dot plus alpha plus beta and then omega i square y i dot plus omega i square y i is equal to zero so this is the equation that you have to solve and the equivalent equation that we are used to solving is y i double dot plus two 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 zeta omega i y i dot plus omega i square y i equal to zero so equivalent equivalent zeta you can find out right so so equivalent zeta in this case will be two zeta omega i is equal to alpha plus beta omega i square yeah and hence you can find out zeta equal to alpha plus beta omega i square right divided by 2 omega i this will be equivalent damping factor or damping ratio yeah so this is equivalent yeah. but this you are used to you know uh, how it behaves what is the solution yeah you have omega d uh, it comes the solution comes in terms of omega d where omega d equal to root 1 minus uh, zeta square uh, omega n right so all those things uh, whatever you studied now this is applicable so basically this kind of transform transformation actually changes from the 
m degree of freedom, multi degree of freedom systems to a single degree of freedom system, and then you can solve it. But provided that the damping is a relay damping, right? So in that case, you are uh, able to do it. Otherwise, it's not. And uh, this is reasonable because most of the time, damping is really damping only because the structures, for example, the stiff, the uh, the damping really proportional to the stiffness itself. Yeah. So in that case, uh, it really works. Okay. Now, can we extend this to a forced vibration, forced damped vibration? Yeah. So, can we do that? So we start with the original equations now in x double dot plus c, okay? So our c is now we know that this is equal to alpha uh, alpha m plus beta k x double dot, yeah? Uh, sorry, x dots, single dot, uh, plus, this is basically c, uh, and this is uh, plus uh, k x equal to, if there is a, well, f matrix here. So we are adding, this is a forced vibration. So we are talking about the forced damped vibration. So force is also there, damping also there, although it's a relay damping. The final equations, we have seen that, that was look like after transforming, we get y, i, double dot, we can, we can find out, okay. So um, uh, here, one thing we did not see that what happens to this one? Okay, so we have applied the, uh, so we did the transformation, and the transformation was uh, x equal to p hat y, okay? So we write here, so what we get? And we will change x equal to this, and we will also multiply here, pre-multiply with p hat transpose. Yeah, so in that case, what happens if we have x? We are going to change this one x equal to p hat y, and at the same time multiply p hat like this one. So this thing will change the way we have seen earlier. So the left hand side will be simply uh, uh, that will be y like i then y double dot plus we have alpha then i plus beta gamma uh, sorry the lambda and then we you have y dot plus k y uh, not k but uh, lambda big lambda is equal to, and here we get p hat transpose f. Yeah. Okay. Now, p hat transpose. So p hat itself, p hat is m by m. p hat transpose is m by m only, and this is m by one, basically, right? So, what you get is uh, the whole thing is m by one only. Yeah. Okay. So this is a new transformed trans. Let's call it f hat. Yeah. So this is a transformed uh, force now. It's so not the force, not original force, but transformed force. So the individual equations now you can write is y i double dot plus alpha plus beta, and then lambda i times y dot plus lambda i y i right is equal to here you can write f hat ith one okay ith row basically 
yeah or in other words uh, we change uh, from lambda i to omega i square so we get i y i double dot plus alpha plus beta omega i square y dot plus plus lambda uh, i is omega i square so omega i square y i y i okay equal to f i okay now you are also used to this one actually so given any kind of force if f, f i equal to zero this is a this again this is a uncoupled problem in m in the, this gives you m uncoupled uh, problem yeah if equal to 0 this is single degree y i is uh, just one variable the whole equation has only one variable that is y i force f i is given is uh, since you know the model matrix to begin with is you multiply with the force vector you get the transformed force vector which is here and you know omega i um, to begin with alpha beta also given so you can find out y i for any force given here yeah so the force vibration the we have done in chapter 3 uh, whatever you learn there you can directly apply it here so even you can also uh, apply the uh, tangent vibration concepts because now if i if the if could be anything could be a sinusoidal that will be a harmonically forced vibration or could be a step function uh, could be one impulse or could be triangular uh, waveform so any kind of thing yeah so so whatever you learned in chapter two three four you can now directly apply here basically because this is uncoupled and hence uh, this is a uh, single degree of freedom a single degree of freedom you have mastered already so you can just apply it here and you will solve all of that so this is the application of that so whatever okay okay now just uh, it's almost done basically the chapter uh, two uh, chapter uh, five and six together of the ebook or chapter five of your uh, paper uh, paperback textbook uh, only a small uh, things I would add here is uh, uh, like why this lambda lambda could be a repeated what we call it a repeated repeated root okay so that will be lambda i equal to lambda j is possible yeah uh, eigenvector will not be same although the phi i you know the phi i hat will not be equal to phi j hat okay it is possible this is called a repeated root but in in that case these two that is the thing we have seen that lambda i uh, when lambda i not equal to lambda j when lambda i not equal to lambda j then these are then uh, and phi j hat are orthogonal are orthogonal right orthogonal however if this is the situation repeated root means uh, lambda i equal to lambda, you get two roots of the same value and the associated eigenvector may not be the same but in that case lambda i and lambda j in this case yeah will may not be orthogonal okay so this remember that this uh, and j may not be may or may not be it may or may or may not be ortho okay so this is because uh, when we derived it there uh, we impose this condition lambda i equal to uh, not equal to lambda j and hence uh, we got the condition the orthogonal condition but um, uh, but in this case since uh, both are uh, same and hence uh, 
uh, these two may be the any combination of the two will be basically the associate eigenvector. It only says that if the associate eigenvector is not unique, then lambda i equal to lambda j, and then it tells that these two, any combination of the two, will also be any will also be an eigenvector. Yeah. So what is the meaning? Uh, okay, so we can also actually uh, quickly we can look at that. Uh, what is the meaning? Why? What I am saying basically is. So let us say you have a two. Say this one, this one you have. A, okay. So. One in general, the the equation you can write it something like this one, right? So, okay. so this is this is what this one is simply this is what you call it is a uh, 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 I I can have a problem, right? So eigenvalue problem. Yeah? Okay. Finally, for, for you also, for you also, how did you write? You, you do, uh, k, and then you have uh, lambda uh, m. Yeah. And then you uh, basically uh, here you have x naught. You had like this. Yeah. X naught. Equal to zero, have like this. Then we did some transformation. Okay. So uh, after the transformation, what we uh, uh, what we get is basically we can get in this form. Yeah. So uh, after when you multiply here uh, x naught, uh, you are writing in terms of phi. Yeah. So when you do that, finally you will get uh, this kind of transformations because m these terms becomes one and uh, here you get uh, the different uh, matrix so what i meant was from here we have to transform to that okay so let's multiply it by m inverse yeah so we have m inverse then k minus lambda m x naught equal to zero or we get m inverse k minus lambda and m inverse m which will be i yeah and then you have x naught equal to zero now this uh, again x naught remember we had x naught uh, uh, let's talk, talk about the ith I get the eigenvalue problem. Yeah. So I can eigenvalue problem. And uh, here we have this M inverse K minus lambda identity matrix multiplied by lambda I in this case, and here it will be X naught I equal to Z. Yeah. Now X naught we can have phi hat i is equal to x naught i at one and divided by root m i i where m i i is equal to x naught i transpose m x naught i if if we do this transformation okay then what do we get we get we get m inverse k minus lambda i then the identity matrix and then is equal to phi i hat multiplied by root m i i is equal to zero yeah? or 
we transfer in this side so we have m i i root multiplied by m inverse k minus yeah uh, okay so this now this is a constant term uh, this time all this side all of them are zero so basically we don't have to write like this one so we let us say uh, this constant so it can go that side so we have this equal to zero or simply let's call m inverse k as a right so we get a minus minus lambda i right i times phi i equal to zero right and hence you get the you can write a phi i minus lambda or equal to lambda i phi i hat right so this so this is what the eigenvalue problem right eigenvalue problem so this is what we are talking about so this and these are same basically yeah so so anyway coming back to the here if uh, we are going to look at if the eigen vector eigen values are the same then what happens so okay so okay so let's uh, delete this all this let us say lambda 1 lambda 2 is equal to 2 right so in that case you get a then uh, phi 1 is equal to lambda 1 phi 2 uh, phi 1 yeah similarly a phi 2 hat equal to lambda 2 phi 2 hat what you will get in this case is where where lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 that's given here but phi 1 hat is not equal to phi 2 hat yeah. so this is a repeated repeated eigenvalue right okay if that is the case then we can just multiply together yeah so um, means multiply add together so let us say we have uh, two numbers let us say two numbers uh, constants basically constants constants let us say a and b right so if we say we multiply a here and we multiply b here and then add yeah add so what we get we will get a times a phi 1 hat plus b phi 2 hat is equal to a lambda 1 plus b lambda 2 sorry a we get like this one equal to lambda 1 and then we get a phi 1 hat plus b phi 2 hat this is because lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 hence lambda 1 will be common and we will have a phi 1 plus b phi 2 right okay so what do we get here also what do you say a this means this is another this is this is another eigen vector let's call it this equal to lambda this, lambda 1 and this phi 1 to hat where phi 1 to hat equal to a phi 1 hat plus b phi 2 hat yeah is it different so phi 1 2 is not equal to phi 1 equal to not equal to phi 2 this is a different one what you see here this is also valid hence phi 1 2 is also a an eigenvector eigenvector corresponding to corresponding to lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 right? that means infinite number of eigenvectors we can get if the 
two eigenvalues are same, if the eigenvalues are repeated, then eigenvectors are infinite. Okay, you just have the combination of the two eigenvectors corresponding to the two repeated eigenvalues, and you will get the infinite number of uh, eigenvectors. Here, a and b keep on changing. You can keep on get, uh, getting phi hat one two, which will be a eigenvector because see here, because this satisfy this automatically. Yeah, so this this you have to know. Yeah, so solution in that case will be infinite. Yeah, so you can see here. 